You've been in relationships where you gave and didn't receive anything in return. You've been in relationships with men who were domineering and didn't listen to you. You've been in relationships with men who were passive and weak. Which leads to the obvious question, can you really have a 50-50 relationship? In this Love You podcast, I'm going to share a very personal example about how the answer is both yes and no. Stick around. I'm Evan Marquette, dating coach for smart, strong, successful women and your personal trainer for love. Welcome to the Love You podcast. Keep listening to discover whether you could really have an equal relationship. When we're done, I'll let you know how you could apply to Love You to create a passionate relationship that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood. The struggle is real. Um, I have been a dating coach for women for nearly two decades. Uh, my clients tend to be among the top 90% most impressive people on earth. And understandably, they did not stay single this long to just settle on any random guy. Um, that wouldn't feel good. Settling is not a, a recipe for relationship success. And by the way, if you've ever heard a video or a podcast from me where you think my central message is to settle, listen again. <laughs> Nothing I've ever said. I wouldn't be a successful dating coach if that was my, my message. But I do understand why people struggle with the concept of an equal relationship. And so for our purposes today, I want to get linguistic with you. And I want to try to parse different terms that may sound similar. Let's just plant this flag and say that the word equal is different than the word the same. Equal is different than the same. I would certainly like to think my wife and I are equals. There is no objective observer in the universe who would think that my wife and I are the same. And so the hard part with this is that there's a certain mythology around everything being split equally. And I don't, I'm not against everything being split equally. It sounds perfect, perfectly nice in theory. She makes 50% of the money. He does 50% of the house cleaning. They alternate who initiates the dinner plans and drives to school. And it's not to say there's no such thing as a relationship like that. But the truth is, and as a reality-based dating coach. My loyalty is to the truth about how the world is, not necessarily how we want the world to work. Most relationships are not about a 50 split of everything. They are about a division of duties, right? So you could divide your duties, right? In right, the same way that people at a company, here's the guy who does the accounting and here's the guy who does the creative marketing and here's the guy who's the visionary CEO. and not everybody does the exact same job, but they're all important parts of the company. There's this idea that we should just split everything down the middle, right? split the baby direct down the middle. And it doesn't always work that well in practice. And there's a, that's the reason there's a division of duties. There's a reason people do different things. I wouldn't be much of a husband if my set of expectations was that my wife had to get a job paying as much as my job. Because, you know, 50-50, the wife should pull as much weight as the husband does. I wouldn't be much of a husband if I insisted that my wife take out the trash as much as I did. Right? That's, that's my job. Why would I insist on splitting that 50-50? I wouldn't be much of a husband if I asked her to be online all the time and find cool social events for us because... Her, the nature of her daily life is not to sit in front of a computer for 10 hours a day. That's where, where I am. So I shine there. So in a healthy relationship, instead of aspiring to a 50-50 split of everything, um, you want to find an organic division of duties that feels good, has to feel good for both people. One that doesn't require a constant negotiation. In that realm, it doesn't matter who does what. And right? as long as you feel like you're both getting a fair deal. The problem, and this is a human problem, it's not a man versus woman problem, is that most of us tend to 
overestimate what we do and underestimate what our partners do. Right? When we're keeping score, we're always thinking, oh, the, here's the time that I sacrifice myself. We don't always know about the, the times that our partners sacrifice. And that's how you end up with this phenomenon. And it's relatively widespread. You're probably familiar with it. With men who work, right? they work full-time jobs, and they don't get what their stay-at-home wives do all day to take care of their families. Right? As a man who works from home, I can say, not happily, but I can say definitively that she works longer hours than I do because I get out of work at six o'clock. My work is a nine to six job. I, I built it that way. My wife is up doing laundry at midnight, checking up on a day of emails to see if she got anything from the teacher, or from the soccer coach. Um, as a sole breadwinner, I can compartmentalize my life a little bit more than she does. Now, whether you listening to this feel that's fair and equitable is immaterial to this discussion because my wife and I are content with our arrangement in that she never has to worry about money. And I can trust that she runs the house and gets the kids to school and gets them to soccer practice and drama club while I'm working all day. And for us, this is a win-win. We have different jobs, but we both feel like we're winning. If you're a career woman, and what I'm telling you right now doesn't remotely describe your life at all, that's perfectly fair. I'm not saying, and I'm, I'm, I'm using my life experience, I'm not expecting it to be yours. Just remember, there's no one right way to divide things. The only feeling that both parties have is that their relationship feels good, that it feels fair, nobody feels taken advantage of. Right. At the same time, we could also recognize that reasonable people also might value different things. Two different people could look at the same situation and draw different conclusions. You may value going out multiple times a week, but if he does not, you can't expect him to be the one to lead the social plans. He may really value being neat and orderly around the house. If you do not, he may feel resentful and put upon. When we expect our partners to feel as strongly as we do, that's where a lot of this collapses. So all of us tend to put time into things that we think matter, but we can't all agree on what matters. My wife, her identity is that of the consummate hostess, very much cares about how things look and feel when she's throwing a party or a get together. My belief is otherwise. I think that if people are coming to see us on a Saturday afternoon, they're fine with burgers and beer and a dip in the pool. She, on the other hand, will spend Friday night cutting up peaches for white sangria and putting labels on plates that she keeps in a spare room in our garage so she can serve five different kinds of cheeses on different plates. This is not an exaggeration. And because she and I look at this same situation differently, she takes infinitely longer to prepare for parties than I would. Now, I ask sincerely, should this be a 50-50 arrangement? If my barbecue takes 90 minutes to prepare for and hers takes six or seven hours, should we split that exactly down the middle when I don't even agree with how we should throw the party? This is where couples really need to understand and respect each other. So in making this video, I actually brought my wife in to ask her about this. And she pointed out that because she values the details more than I do, she has no trouble doing more work. She doesn't blame me because I don't want to do the things that she's doing. This is something that makes her feel happy, this level of preparation. So she knows she's got a good husband who is not going to read her mind, doesn't agree. But if she tells me, hey, I'm going to go to the grocery store, pick up the ice before the party, pick up the chocolate cake, um, clean the spider webs off the tables before you know the guests get over so I could put on tablecloths, I'll do whatever I'm told. I just don't always see all those details as necessary, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a willing participant, right? And she also recognizes that there are things where I'm not a passive participant, where I'm always going to take the lead and I don't expect her to do anything. If something big comes up around the house, if the, and these, these all happen, unfortunately, the, the pipes burst underneath the house or the sliding door needs fixing and replacing, or we got to do something with the solar panels. That's me. I'm the one who finds the contractor and stays on top of them. And I, so there's just this 
division of duties that we fall into and it works for us. Not saying it would work for you. So here's the other thing about the 50-50 relationship. It's about personality types. And you really kind of have to know yours. A type A person like me doesn't mind taking on more than 50% of things, right? If it's, you know, I'm, I'm very used to being single independent. Before I was with my wife, I ran my life perfectly well. I'd take on 100% of things. That comes naturally. So I stay in my lane. My lane in this household is making money, doing research, making plans, handling all of my son's sports stuff. Right? But if you're a type A woman who's dating a more laid back guy, you can't expect him to be 50-50 with you because you are the kind of person who might want to take control 70% of the time. So sometimes being type A is a burden because it's more work, but it's also a blessing in that you get to control your situation instead of sort of keeping your fingers crossed and hoping someone does what you want, when you want, as you want, which is usually a ticket for disappointment. Right. So I don't mind paying 100% of my family's bills because I'm relatively good at it and I'm not keeping score. I'm not giving my wife a hard time about the fact that she doesn't contribute financially. Doesn't spend, that's, that is not important. That would be a bonus, right? And I've made peace with that. A lot of women can't make peace with the idea that they may make more money than the guy. And so I encourage you to do that. And my wife doesn't mind doing 90% of the meal prep and the packing and the laundry and the house maintenance because she recognizes she's free from having to uh, make money and she sees this as her domain. She takes it really seriously. And it's easier sometimes to do the vast majority of this stuff than to micromanage me and explain to me what I need to do and how I in invariably will do it wrong. <laughs> so long story short, if you're a working woman, you're entitled to live your life exactly as you want, but please don't hold out for some sort of mythical 50-50 arrangement where you split everything down the middle. Find a division of responsibilities that largely feels good to both of you and don't worry about keeping score because once you start keeping score, everybody loses. Have you had a hard time finding an equal relationship? Share your comments below. Let me know why it's been challenging. I'll see you back here next week. My name is Evan Mark Katz. Thanks for tuning into the Love You podcast. Uh, for more episodes like this, click on the subscribe button, ring the bell, and choose all to ensure you get notified when new content comes out. If you're listening to the audio podcast, please share an honest review on Apple. They really mean the world to me. I read them and recognize that when you leave a positive review, it encourages more people to subscribe to the Love You podcast and get more love into their life, which is what we're all here for. And if you want to have yourself an easier relationship, the kind I talk about in this podcast that makes you feel safe, heard, and understood, look for the link below. Or just go to www.evanmarkkatz.com to watch my free video about how to gain confidence, attract quality men, and fix your broken man picker. When you're done, you can apply to Love You to join hundreds of other smart, strong, successful women from around the world in a coaching community where women like you actually get the unconditional love that you deserve. I'll see you in there. Take care.